Okay, the first thing you do is you go to Google and then you type Google Flights. From here, you press the second link. And then you get this page. So from here, as you can see, it gives you the option for round trip, passengers, type of flights, your home airport and where you want to go to, dates, and then it has some suggestions and the map. So what I usually do is I'll do, let's do Oakland, and as an example, let's do New York. So if you notice, it gives you the mo three different options for the, in the area. So for New York, there's these three. You can either click the specific airport, or if you don't really have a preference, you can just put New York all airports. Let's do dates. Let's do, let's say January 12th through the 18th. And here, if you notice, there's a calendar with different prices. So let's say you want to do these dates per week. And then here it compares all of the different airlines and different places non-stop or if it has any overlays the times everything so here's JetBlue, american spirit delta and then it'll tell you um what the price range is right now so it says prices are currently typical so meaning you're getting a pretty good price american and then here are the longer ones usually the longer ones more expensive ones are near the end and there's 249 more longer ones so let's say you want to get the cheapest one. You would most likely do JetBlue, non-stop, this one's 5 hours and 20 minutes. And this is your price round trip. So the best price will always come out in like, highlighted in green. But again, this one, if you notice, it's $249, so it's the cheapest one. But on the way back, it has two overlays and it's pretty long. So I probably wouldn't do that one. Um, this is kind of where you get to pick and choose what you want to do. Either you can, if you want to keep it this date, but you want to pay less, well, you would do this one. But if you want to get, uh, no, they're all pretty long, 11 hours. What I would personally do is I would just change the date to come back. Because it most likely is that they don't have that many flights. So here, you can change. So let's say you want to come back on Sunday instead. It would actually be cheaper, 227. Let's see. There you go. So this is the returning flight. So now it's 227. It's six hours and 44 minutes, but it is non-stop. So I would just do this one. And by the way, this is the total price, including taxes and fees and everything. So 227. And then just to book, you would go through here. And then you would just fill out your information like you regularly would. But the, with Google Flights, it just kind of compares all the prices and all that. So let's see. Let's do another example. Let's say I love going to Hawaii. So let's do Hawaii. So since I just put Hawaii and there's different islands, it's going to give you this option. So you can see all three. Four, one, two, three, four. Four different islands. And it kind of gives you a little overlay here, so this is the cheapest one, 322, has two stops, one stop, non-stop. This one's non-stop, so let's try this one. So Hawaiian Airlines, 7 a.m., if you want to leave in the morning. So these two are pretty similarly priced. It's just the time you get there. Usually what I like to do when I go to Hawaii is I like to leave early in the morning. They are three hours behind. So here it says you go at 7 in the morning, but you get over there at 10.35. So you still have pretty much the entire day to enjoy. So this one's 3.28, non-stop, 5 hours and 35 minutes. And then the returning flight. There's this one in the morning. This one's basically all throughout the day. But it is a cheaper one, so let's do this one. So again, 328 flight 
round trip, non-stop. So in this case, well actually they're all the same, so it doesn't really matter, but sometimes it will go, get, take you to other um, websites like Priceline, Cheap Air, or Hawaiian, but this one is the same, so I would just book it with Hawaiian. And remember, this is already the price with um, all the fees, baggage, and everything. And you would do it here. So if the flights don't come with baggage, it will usually tell you. Let me try. Has to experience super cheap, eighty-five dollars, but doesn't come with baggage. So that is something to keep in mind. But it will tell you, which is good. And then it'll tell you here how much the actual baggage is. So if for the carry-on it's seventy-two, check bag is sixty-four. So you would add. 85 plus whichever one you want to take or if you're taking both then you would add both and then again here's the spectrum so it's typical this is usually when they're low and then this is when they're high okay now let's say this time you want to go somewhere further and you want to do multiple destinations like i like to do so i would probably do a bigger airport just because it's probably gonna have cheaper flights so let's say you want to go to, let's let's do what we did. You want to go to London. So let's make this shorter. Let's say we're going to go for only half a week. Let's do it this way. Okay. Oh, but since you're going to do multiple destinations, you wouldn't need ground trip. You'd only need, let's do this way. Let's do multi-city. So San Francisco to London, and then let's say you want to go to from London to, I don't know, Paris, so France. You want to get there on Wednesday, and then from Paris you want to come back home. Yeah, so that's one week. And then you can change how many passengers, economy, but for now, let's just do one passenger. So, let's see. Wow, entire trip, $412 to go from San Francisco to London, from London to Paris, and from Paris to San Francisco. This is where it's at. So let's do Norwegian. Honestly, their, their airline is great too, by the way. Okay, and then let's do the best flight to Paris. Only an hour and 15 minutes. What? Let's do this one. So, there's the thing. So here's the catch. The way back is 27 hour long flight. Well, not necessarily a 27 hour long flight, but it will take you 27 hours to get home because there is an overlay of 12 hours. Let's see, where's the overlay? The overlay... The overlay is in Lisbon. I don't know. Oh, it's overnight. So sometimes if you have an overlay during the day, what I will do is I'll just stay there an entire day and then book a separate flight the next day. This one is overnight, so I would honestly probably do that. It ends up being usually the same, maybe a couple dollars more, not much of a difference. But this is overnight, so I would not take this flight. Let's see. I would honestly do this second one. It's not too much of a difference. And it's non-stop, 11 hours. Okay, so this is your final itinerary. So the total price to fly from San Francisco to London, London to Paris, Paris to San Francisco is $439. Like, what? I wasn't planning on it, but y'all should hop on this one. Non-stop, all flights non-stop. This one's 10 hours, which is not bad at all. One hour and then 11 hours home. These both come with, these all come with free carry-ons and checked back, so that's really good. And you would just go select, and then you would probably have to book these separately, so it tells you here. You would have to do this one, this one, and this one, but then 
like I said, it says total price includes taxes and fees. So you're going to be paying 439 flat. That's it. So honestly, Google Flights is my go-to to pick any trip. You know, you would think that going to London, going to Paris would be super expensive. But as you see, it's not. It just kind of depends if the time you're going and, you know, your stays, all of that. That's a different story. And I'll show you how to do that next. But flight-wise, Google is my go-to. And I'm going to show you how I usually book my stays. So honestly, my go-tos are usually airbnb i always check airbnb first just because you know get the comfort of your own home or a whole place to yourself usually kitchen you get to cook save some money so let's start with that so let's say for okay so let's do london what was the date i think it was like january I think I said 12th to, yeah, I think that's what I had. Say two adults, say you're going with someone. So search. Okay, here are some of your options. So it'll have the night. I usually don't look too much at the night. I look more so at the total because they add a bunch of cleaning fees and all these extra fees for no reason. So look at the total. But to narrow it down, let's do price. Let's say you want no more than, let's base it based on the first one. So no more than 140 a night. Or 150, 145, that's fine. And then, okay, let that load. And let's say we want the whole place, so entire place. Okay, so here you go. So 538 for the whole four days. 454 for the whole days. Wow, this one's really pretty. So and then considering it would be two of these, so ideally I would assume you would split it in half. So that's about 225 or so between two people for four days. So that is not bad at all. So here's some more. Wow, there's some really pretty places. Okay. 423, 479, so on. Nice, 247. It's cute, it's small, but you know, gets the job done. This one's really cute. And then over here, I will tell you where it's located, so it's this one. Let's do Paris. I think I had this one for... You would technically still need it for this day. So 15 to 19. To adult search. Okay. So here's 4.79 in total for this place. Okay, here's this one. This one's 3.90. This one looks pretty good. Let's do this one. So there you go. Now you have your stay for Paris. It's I mean this one's wait. London. Okay. 2.47. Two forty seven four oh nine. Let's do the math. So two forty seven plus four oh nine. Divided by two. Okay, so in stays for the whole week, you would pay three twenty eight. Um, now let's check other websites. So I'll just do, um, yeah, London hotels. Let's try. So this is one way you can just use Google again. 
And then it'll show you a bunch of... Actually, yeah, let's try this one. Let's change the dates. January... 12 to 15. So it's similar to Google Flights, but for hotels. I don't use this option so much, but you can. So here's this one. This is per night, though. So this is 225 per night, 205 per night. So these are a little pricey. This one's not bad. It's 71. It looks, it looks nice. Okay, let's try this one. And then this will give you the options where it's cheaper, so, so let's just try Hotels.com. Wow, so two sixteen for three nights. Ooh! This is nice. Wow. Okay, now let's see how much was it for Airbnb. No, no, no. 247 total and this one is the 216. Let's see if they don't add any extra charges. And it comes with breakfast. Okay. Mm. Okay, so they added taxes and fees, $43, so the total is $258. How much was this one? So it's about a $10 difference, but the good thing about booking with the hotel is this has breakfast, so you are saving money for three days on breakfast, so. Mm, personally, I kind of want to say I would do the hotel Whenever I do a hotel, I make sure for it to have breakfast because, you know, that's another way to save money. Food adds up real quick. So, yeah, I would do this one. Okay, now let's look for one for Paris. Let's go back. Let's do it here. So, I'll do Paris. Okay, so these are other options. So there's Expedia booking, trip bad bike, no, no trip advisor, hotels. I've used Expedia before. I've done cheap tickets. I have done Hotwire. And they've all worked pretty well for me. So you could go directly to those websites. Or again, this one's pretty similar to Google Flights where it gets all the best um, deals for um, all of these different websites. So let's just do that again. So this one is 160. This one's really good. 232. 304. This one is a four-star hotel. And then again, depending on where, like what areas you want to explore, you can also use a map to kind of say, like let's say you want to go here to the Eiffel Tower. So this hotel is over here. So if you, that doesn't look like it's too far, but if you want something near, there's this one right here, 124. Let's see. This one is super close to the Eiffel Tower. And this one looks really pretty. It says it's a three-star tourist hotel, but no, do we care too much? No. Free breakfast, near public transfer, transit, great location. Again, free breakfast. Yes. Book a room. Let's see. Um, this one you can book it directly through them, so let's do that. Okay, this looks cute. Oh, here, I can change it. Let's do dollars. So it's 542 for four nights. This one's 600. These ones are a little more expensive. So if you do want to get something closer to, let's say, the Eiffel Tower, then you know this might be a good option for you if you're willing to pay like $143 more. It does come with breakfast. So this is kind of where you start weighing out what you want, what you need. 
um, it's up to you. I would probably just do the Airbnb just because it is cheaper. And you know, Paris is really big. There's a lot you want to explore anyway, so. But if you're there specifically for the Eiffel Tower, then this is a good option. Or you could go back and search some more, you know? Let's see. Let's see, let's see. So here's one for 186. That's pretty much the same. Let's do this one. Let's see. This one's 92. Oh, this one looks really cute too. Okay, let's try this one. Let's see. Let's go back. Okay, let's book a room. So this one's $96 a night. Let me just do it here. Just it's a little bit clear. So the total is $421. I don't well it said on there, I think $17 in taxes, but let's see. Let's reserve. This one does. Oh, this one is breakfast for twelve dollars. Okay, it's not too bad. Let's see what the final total is. One sec. Okay, so four hundred and thirty-seven dollars for four nights in Paris. How much is this one? This one's still a little cheaper. Four hundred and nine. So again, you kind of weigh out your options. The good thing about this one is it does have a kitchen. It is to yourself. So, you know, you can always cook instead of having to go out and eat every night. So, another way to save some money. But, yeah, it's really up to you. Okay, so these are some of my personal options. It's a little hard at first, but this one hopefully helps you figure that out a little bit. Um, yeah, um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, questions. if you know a better way, let me know. I know there's a lot more I've been trying to explore a little bit. I found a couple other websites, but I haven't played with them too much. Um, these are just my personal go-tos. They're pretty easy. They work for me, and I haven't had any problems with any of them, so give it a go. Hopefully this helped you all, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!